Joining me now is Eric Feigelding. He's an epidemiologist and co-founder of the World Health Network and was one of the first prominent scientists to warn us about the dangers of the pandemic. Eric, welcome to the program. Let me begin with BA5 subvariant. How concerned should we be considering people are getting sick who are boosted and fully vaccinated? Yeah, we're very, very concerned because BA5 is almost like a brand new generation of these variants. BA5 is, it, unlike other variants that are faster transmission, BA5 is one of the most evasive. It's the most efficient pole vaulter of uh, over existing immunity walls from both vaccinations and previous infections. If you've been previously infected or vaccinated, you should not assume that you're immune to BA5. And this is the, a problem because runaway infections will ultimately lead to more runaway hospitalizations and deaths. And just for context, you know, we're already at higher hospitalizations than the Delta variant wave of, that the U.S. saw last um, summer and early, early fall. So we are already past that point. Um, we're not as high as the winter Omicron wave. A BA1 Omicron wave yet, but we are getting there. And many countries we've seen have been completely swamped by BA5, and the U.S. is still at the beginning of the BA5 wave. You know, when you talk to young people, I'll tell you, my daughter, including, she has, she's fully vaccinated. She's had one booster. She does not want to get the second booster. She says, why should I get boosted again? Because people are getting sick all around me and they are boosted, mom. They are fully vaccinated. But the reality is if you do get that booster, the chances of you getting seriously sick and in the hospital still does diminish. Am I right here? That's right. The, the second booster is very important against hospitalization. Infection, the benefits are um, uh, much smaller, but, but hospitalization and death, the second booster is absolutely critical because B5 is so evasive, so evasive that even with previous um, vaccinations, without another booster, you basically uh, have like only about 60, 70 percent um, protection against hospitalization. You need that second booster to get you back over 90% protection. And people don't realize that difference in 9% and 60% uh, is about 4x difference. Like, if you really want to protect yourself, please, please get yourself another booster if it's been more than 90 days since your last infection. And definitely if it's been more than five months uh, since your last um, vaccine shot. And of you course really need it. Yeah, because Eric, uh, our, our variant of vaccines are not arriving until late fall, and we need much more protection right here, right now. And, of course, we need CDC to also expand eligibility because right now it's for yeah. people over 50. All right, so let me ask about those um, boosters that we're expecting in the fall. Uh, they're expected to target new forms of Omicron, things like BA5. But, I mean, is this a gamble, Eric? Because by the time we get those boosters, we could have yet a newer mutation. Yeah, I, I, I agree that it's possible that new variants will emerge. And, you know, our variants in certain ways are, have been emerging much faster than they have uh, last year. But I want to remind you that uh, the more diversified you are against more variants, that you're better protected against future variants. Because right now we're still, uh, you know, still uh, um, boosting with Wuhan 1.0 uh, the original strain, that if you get more of these, you know, whether it's BA5, BA2 uh, variant uh, boosters, you will be much closer to whatever comes next. Oh. And I think that's key. And FDA has also uh, tweaked the rules that, you know, you can actually get a, a modified booster approved for these vaccine companies, which are much, which are much faster uh, approval process. So hopefully well, we can stay ahead of it. But it's, yes, it's, it's not a guarantee, but it's definitely true that you will be more protected Correct. than you are with the original uh, vaccine uh, shot. And so I, I think it, that is good news that's on the horizon because this, this winter will definitely be another large wave. And Eric, before I let you go, you know, we've sort of moved on with our lives. People are traveling, going places. Um, most people I know, no one is really wearing masks anymore outside their I mean, we have to at work, but, you know, most people are not in public life. What is your recommendation? Should we be putting those masks back on? 
Yeah, absolutely. I still wear my mask anywhere I go into public spaces indoors um, and as uh, for my kid as well. I think the key is that everyone masking, especially with premium masking, will definitely slow down the infection rates and also slow down many other viruses that's also circulating around. There's many, many more viruses now that some people are coming down with than ever before. So definitely, and I definitely think airlines should reimpose them for the sake of traveling public, for the sake of variants are spreading around the world, not hop skipping nonstop between travelers, because international travel is how variants get from one side of the globe mm -hmm. to another. All right. So I think, I hope the airlines do adopt mask rules soon. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Eric Feigolding, thank you very much.